pleased to welcome you to today's ceremony marking the completion of the Robert R. Jorgensen Athletic and Event Center. From the start of this project, this space was envisioned as a center for our student athletes, our entire student body, our faculty and staff, as well as our community. And I'm delighted to see so many of you here with us today. This ceremony represents a collection of narratives that weaves together and brings us here today in this beautiful facility. It's a story about leadership and legacy, a story about athletic success, and a story about vision, generosity, courage, and commitment. Today we pay tribute to the story of the leadership and legacy of a very special man, the founding father of Hawk Athletics, Robert R. Jorgensen. Because of Bob Jorgensen, the Hawks have soared to new heights year after year on a local, regional, and national stage. And we are thrilled and honored to have him on hand with us today, along with his family, friends, and colleagues, as we dedicate this beautiful new building to him. This building stands as a symbol of excellence of what Bob, his colleagues, and Hawk Athletics represent here at MVCC. Bob, a long line of people will thank you throughout today. And please let me be the first one to thank you publicly. The story about athletic success relates to our student athletes and the athletic staff here at MVCC. Our Hawks are a significant point of pride for us here at the college. The overall depth and well-roundedness of MVCC's athletic program speak to the dedication and hard work of our coaches, both past and present, and the commitment, talent, and drive of our student athletes. Our amazing coaching staff, which works to bring top caliber students, student athletes to MVCC, guides our student athletes to keep them on the right track for their studies. From the time and attention it takes to get them into the programs and classes of their choice to ensuring the appropriate support systems are in place, our coaches are there for our student athletes and have developed relationships throughout the college to make sure that all of MVCC is there to ensure their success in competition as well as the classroom. The entire MVCC community is excited by the achievements of our athletes, so many of whom are with us today. This semester alone, MVCC has been sending team, many teams and individuals to regional and national competitions and triumphs. And until now, all that success has happened in athletic facilities that were built decades ago. Our championship women's, uh, women's cross country team is a great example. Until the Jorgensen Center was completed, their wintertime workouts took place in hallways and stairwells around our campus. Now, due to the vision and commitment of so many, they will enjoy a top quality facility to match their top quality commitment to academic excellence and athletic success. Today is also a story of vision and generosity. This facility would not be what we see today if not for the incredible support of MVCC Alumni Association members and MVCC Foundation supporters like Mike Briggs, class of 1963, for their steadfast support of Hawks Athletics. That support provided that extra margin of excellence to make this facility what it is today. On behalf of everyone involved in this project, Mike, thank you so very much for everything you did to help make this happen. We also owe thanks and acknowledgement to the many local and state elected officials we have many with us here today, and I'd especially like to acknowledge my partners seated on uh, stage here with us for their vital roles in making this incredible new facility a reality. We have County Executive Anthony Pacenti. <laughs> new York State Senator Joe Griffo. Former Assemblywoman and current uh, Commissioner of Office of General Services, Roland Decito. <laughs> Assemblywoman, Claudia Tenney. <laughs> Her 
I'd also like to thank uh, Assemblyman uh, Anthony Brandisi, his uh, representative Caitlin Calagero is with us here today as well. And here there is also a story, a story about courage and commitment. New York State has a standard process for constructing facilities at community colleges. However, a few years ago, the legislature changed that process, changed it on a dime for one year and one year only. And if not for a same day response from staff in Senator Griffo and Assemblywoman DeStito's office calling the college and saying, we need the, your facility request for the field house by four o'clock this afternoon. We might not get it in. Well, if that hadn't have happened, the shifting sands of the state budget process that year would have swallowed this project whole. Then, in the face of difficult financial challenges, County Executive Pacenti, Chairman Fiorini, and the rest of the County Board of Legislators were committed to the quality of life aspect of this project for our students and our community. And they trusted the college to make the most of the county's matching funds. Thank you all for your incredible support for your courage and commitment. I'd also like to recognize the MVCC Board of Trustees. Uh, please hold your applause uh, as I introduce them as a whole. Uh, Chair Elaine Falvo, Vice Chair David Mathis, Bill Calley, Sheila Vandeveer, John Stetson, Mary Carmel Wolf, Peter Rahill, Tony Cologne, Student Trustee Esther Caldwell, and Trustee Emeritus Mike Austin for their incredible commitment and support. And there's a story with our Board of Trustees here in making this project a reality. Not just their steadfast commitment to the project, but also the courage to make it all that it could be. The trustees held their first ever community forum regarding the future of the swimming pool as part of this project. They were, willing to <laughs> they were willing to listen to our constituents to determine the extent to which we should renovate the pool or close it. Fortunately, the county executive personally attended the forum and listened closely and along with the Board of Legislators supported additional matching funds with the state to bring the pool to the same standard of excellence that the rest of this facility represents. And if you haven't gone on a, on a tour, uh, when you go after, uh, you'll probably join me when uh, I did my first tour once it all came to be. And it was one of those things you look at the pool and you say, uh, if the pool wasn't there, you do the tour and say, you know, the only thing this place needs is a pool. <laughs> so having the pool as part of this is a tremendous thing. So uh, thank you to the Board of Trustees. And finally, there's the story of the talents that turned our needs into possibilities and our possibilities into three-dimensional solutions. Our design team, which included the architectural team at JMZ and Associates, the staff of Town Engineering, who handled the mechanical and electrical, Almain Associates for all of their structural work, and the LA Group, who provided the wonderful landscaping. Thank you so much for your great work. And the day-to-day -day commitment and attention it took to see this wonderful construction project through to completion right from the very start is another story worth noting. Two key players in this narrative deserve special recognition. Jim Fawcett, project manager for HRBB, and Scott Rollins, the superintendent for Gatano Construction, that together tended to everything necessary and worked so well with our team who was there every step of the way. Ralph Fiola, Mike McCarris, Mike Emmerich, and Gary Broadhurst, who took this on in addition to their daily full-time jobs, this additional full-time job is what it took to make what we see today. Thank you to all of you. I mentioned the courage and support of the MVCC Board of Trustees, and here on behalf of the board is Vice Chair David Mathis to say a few words. Thank you, uh, President Ben Wagner, and good afternoon. On behalf of our board chair, Elaine Fowler, who could not be here, I know she really wanted to be, but she had to be out of town, so I get to fill in as vice chair. 
the new Robert R. Jorgensen Athletic Event Center is an, is an outstanding addition to our campus and to our community. In the tradition of Robert Jorgensen, who made winning a tradition at the college and built the athletic program during his 31 years of outstanding service, this facility is the college's commitment to provide the facilities that are needed for excellence, whether they are used by a student training for a championship or a community resident working out to improve her health. The final product of our effort is a facility that provides for the needs of our students and the needs of our neighbors. It reflects the input of the campus and the community. And it could not have been built without a commitment from our partners in government to provide the resources that are essential to bringing every good idea into being. I want to recognize Oneida County Executive Pacente, our Oneida County Board of Legislators, our state representatives for their support. And I guess in particular, I want to thank the county executive for saving us from making the decision to close our pool because we were moving in that direction. So, I also want to add that um, even though I'm not an athlete, I want to say I did play on the intramural team here at MVCC in 1968 to 69, and I still have my trophy. Matter of fact, <laughs> True. It's the only trophy I ever got from MVCC. <laughs> and back in those days, they were a little dinky trophy. I mean, you know, it wasn't really nice. So I wouldn't bring it and put it in the trophy room, but I still have it. I just want you to know that. Moha Valley Community College exists to provide access to the people of our community and create an environment in which everyone who interacts with this college strives for excellence. This new facility is in keeping with that tradition and with all of our efforts to continue to make this college everything that our community wants and needs. And I want to single out, and I know he never likes to get any additional recognition, but over the years that we built these new facilities and enhanced this campus, one of our trustees, John Stetson. John, you want to stand for a minute? I know you don't want to do it, but come on. I mean, everything that you would want for someone in this community who gives up himself. I mean, he poured into this building the number of hours and the time. I mean, made my job easy as a trustee because all I did was look at John and say, John, is that right? And John goes, yeah, okay, fine. So we just approve it. So thanks a lot, John. Uh, whether training for a race or building an athletic center, nothing worth celebrating comes without hard work. You have put into that work over these past months, and today it is my pleasure to be here to join you in celebrating. And I want to say to Robert Jorgensen again, congratulations, because without you, this facility would not be here. Thank you. Earlier I mentioned the tremendous role that our elected officials played in helping to secure the funding for this facility and I'm so pleased to have several of them with us here today. Uh, so please help me welcome to the podium County, Oneida County Executive Anthony Pacenti. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The sun is shining after our snow. It's a beautiful day here in the Mohawk Valley. And, and before I start, Dave Mathis talked about uh, his trophy from intramurals. I got cut from the baseball team, which kind of ex ex which kind of propelled my career into politics, I guess. So I mean, I don't know. If, so so Bob, you were instrumental in that regard. But I, I mean, I don't know if you want to take credit for that, but we can. But it is really a, a special day here, and uh, and. Uh, to walk up here today, as I have seen as this project has, has moved forward over the last uh, several months, and to walk up today and uh, as an alumni, as a proud alumni of MVCC, and see the name Robert Jorgensen on this building, I can't tell you how proud I am and how proud this community is to have a gentleman like this and to be able to name this facility after him. Uh, the vision of MVCC over the years has been propelled by people like Bob Jorgensen. 
It has been propelled by people like Mike Briggs who went here and committed uh, to the school and to its future uh, time and time again, years after uh, they have left. Um, this facility really embarks a new era, really, I think, and, and I think President Van Wagner would share that with me in terms of what MVC stands for. This community college over the past several years and, and since its existence and beginnings as the first in New York State uh, began on a, a track to instill and to provide the very finest and, the, and to be moving forward each and every year with the best programs, the best academics, the new initiatives that communities look at to help them survive and to achieve and to grow within the community, within a state, within a country with, with its programs and through its uh, graduates. Um, and as we talked first about this program when the, or about this, this project when the president came forward and then talked to us and myself and then the board of legislators and, uh, and the state reps, it was about taking that next step. It was about moving even more forward into the community aspect but into the athletic aspect which has been such a great and strong part of MVCC, but was, was lacking in a couple areas in terms of what we stand here uh, in today. And it is the next step of the outstanding programs that are provided uh, here at MVCC, the vision of MVCC to be a community organization, a community college, a true community college that grows and keeps moving forward. And we made those decisions, and I have to also thank uh, Senator Griffo and then Assemblywoman DeStito because of the vision and the courage, also all of us at tough times, to say this community has to move forward. And uh, for them to be able to leverage and help us leverage those funding, uh, this funding to get this project off and to the Board of Legislators, I thank them as well. And it started with a vision uh, that we talked about that began with Mr. Jorgensen so many years ago and continues today. And to Michael Briggs, who has never forgotten uh, where he came from and what he did. Michael, thank you for your commitment to this institution, to our community. Um, this is a great facility, which is open to the community as, as this college always has been and always will be. And with a pool, also, <laughs> I might add. But, um, but in closing, let me just say that um, on behalf of Oneida County, on behalf of the Board of Legislators, um, I welcome you here today. I thank all of those that were mentioned by the President that had a piece of this, because this was truly a group effort to the Board of Trustees that continues to move this college, and, and the faculty, staff, the students that are here, uh, the athletic teams and, and the people that will enjoy this for years to come, you need to understand where it started and where it began and how it began and why it is named after such a great man because he uh, instilled in the many who passed through here over the years uh, the commitment, the quality, uh, the, the belief, and the dedication uh, to, a, to a school, to a community, to an institution. Uh, that continues today to Robert Jorgensen. Thank you. God bless you for what you did for this institution. Thank you, Michael. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. We're very fortunate at MVCC to have elected officials in Albany who uh, truly do represent uh, this community and, and this college in particular to know what our needs are, what our priorities are, so that when those political winds shift, they're ready to respond, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, and Senator Griffo is certainly one of those, so I'd like to welcome him to the podium right now as well. County Exec is right, the sun is out, but even if it wasn't, we would think it was on stage with the lights. <laughs> 65 years, it's a tremendous history for this college. In fact, uh, it's appropriate, Dave, that you were speaking because you've probably been a trustee the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> Seems that way at least, but a good trustee. But 65 years, what a rich history here. And uh, President Van Wagner's right, uh, we had to move quickly 
and we're fortunate that uh, you have an outstanding staff here that was quick to respond and to provide us what we needed so that Commissioner Destito and I could work in a good partnership to deliver the $5.5 .5 million, which was so important to, to contribute to this building. Because we understand the significance and the importance, not only of this facility, but of what this institution means to our community. Truly, number one in the state, not only because that's where it started here 65 years ago, but you continue to be that in so many other ways. And what we do here to educate the young people, to prepare them to begin constructive careers to make a difference and a contribution to our community. But also what you can do economically and you continue to do economically to be an important critical element to our future potential and eventual success. So I really applaud the president, the staff, the faculty, the students, for what you do each and every day, not only to enhance the reputation of this community, uh, this facility and this institution, but also our community. I also think that it's so appropriate that you name it after such a distinguished individual, because we've had a lot of great faculty and administrators and trustees, but it's really a tribute, Bob, when you can turn around and know that people throughout your career not only have respected you, but have admired you and what you've been able to do to make individuals' lives so much better because of your interaction with them. So this is an appropriate, and Mr. Briggs, thank you for your efforts in ensuring that that acknowledgement took place. 31 years of contribution to this college and to student athletes. It's an amazing accomplishment, an amazing feat. The only thing I would ask is maybe you could give me some golf lessons. I think he probably could have played the Masters from what I hear. But uh, what a great accomplishment, uh, truly deserving. Uh, we compliment you, wish you continued health and, and wellness in your uh, life. And uh, who needs the NBA when we have the Hawks? God bless you. When she was in the assembly, Rowan Destito regularly reminded me and the rest of the college of how important MVCC was, uh, how, how important it was for MVCC to remember the community and uh, to emphasize and amplify our role in the community every, every chance we could. So when we talked about this facility, uh, that's when we started going beyond uh, athletics and thinking of it in a larger scale for an athletic and event center. Um, to be able to bring in a speaker such as Maya Angelou uh, to benefit the broader community as well. Um, so her con consistent commitment to the community uh, just continually reaffirmed our commitment to the community as well. So please uh, join me in welcoming to the podium uh, Commissioner Steve. Thank you, Randy. Um, I'll make some personal comments and that is that I'm very pleased to have been part of the team um, of these, the MVCC trustees, the administration, President Van Wagner, Senator Griffo, and everyone who has been a part of putting this beautiful facility together. And thank you for saving the pool because my mom at 89 years old was very upset that you were closing the pool. She was part of the water aerobics group. I don't know if anybody's here, but for that pool and for all the community people that use the pool, um, it was very important. So um, I'm very pleased that uh, the decision was made that the pool remained. And I think you're right. I think you would have stayed, stood here today and said, this place could have used a pool. So um, I'm here on behalf of Governor Cuomo and I have a, a letter that he sent. Um, Dear friends and family of the Mohawk Valley Community College, I am delighted to send greetings to everyone who has gathered for the official building, opening, and dedication ceremony of Mohawk Valley Community College's new Robert R. Jorgensen Athletics and Events Center. This occasion marks an important milestone in the annals of MVCC and one which will be long be remembered by those who have been witness to the planning and design work that has gone into this eagerly anticipated project. This new facility will provide a fitness center, three basketball courts, and practice space for track and field, soccer, lacrosse, and baseball. 
MVCC's athletic programs are known as some of the most diverse and successful in the Northeast, and this addition will undoubtedly enhance the Hawks' already legendary competitive record. Contributing to the well-rounded education that is offered at this oldest of New York's community colleges, the center will assist today's students as well as future generations of students to realize their unique potential and attain their lifelong goals. On behalf of all New Yorkers, I commend all affiliated with the Robert R. Jorgensen Athletics and Events Center with warmest regards and best wishes for an enjoyable, enjoyable ceremony. Sincerely, Andrew M. Cuomo, Governor of New York State. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jorgensen. Thank you, Mr. Briggs, for being such an integral part of putting this beautiful facility together um, for the community and all of, the, all of us who, he, who live here in the Mohawk Valley. Thank you. Thank you everyone for your kind words uh, and steadfast support of MVCC. Next I would like to introduce an exemplary MVCC student athlete from the MVCC class of 2011, biology major and men's soccer midfielder David Gould. I would like to welcome everyone to the Hawks Nest new, improved, and finally up to par with the talents of the athletes who inhabit it. My name is David Gould. I am a sophomore biology major, co-captain of the soccer team, and a gym rat. Believe it or not, MVCC has shaped almost every aspect of my life for the better. I have, I have had the privilege of being exposed to many years of Mohawk Valley Athletics due to the fact that my father is a professor of physical education and head men's soccer coach and has been for 30 plus years here at the college. See, I grew up in this gym. Since I was about five years of age, on any given day, there would be a chance of seeing little Gould roam in the halls at the gym. I have such pride and great passion for this school and to be standing in this gorgeous facility at this very moment makes me so very proud to be a Hawk. On the first day of classes this semester, my history professor gave our class a bit of advice. And he said to us, and I paraphrase, college is not about getting that piece of paper called your degree. It's about the skills that you obtain while you're here. Now, I did some reflecting on that statement, and I found that the gym gave me a critical skill that has defined my success and my well-being up to this point in my life. Discipline. Work hard. Sweat. Battle through the pain of the wind sprints, knowing that the benefits outweigh the momentary agony. Finishing that research paper, because after that paper, you still got two more subjects to study for before you can even leave the library. PE 154, or fitness center, a class here at the college, a requirement for phys ed majors. It is an attendance-based course where if you do your 30 workouts, you get an A. 30 workouts doesn't seem like that many, but how many people in here have bought a gym membership and only went a handful of times? My point. In my opinion, finishing 30 workouts in 10 weeks is a test. A test of discipline. Now, there are a handful of faculty members here at the gym that I consider lifetimers. Those who have worked here for 25 years or more. Coincidentally, those lifetimers all had Mr. Jorgensen as their boss. Which leads me to believe that Mr. Jorgensen not only provided 31 years of service to the college, but he left a formidable mark on all those he worked with, taught, and coached. This building is a true testament to his legacy. Go Hawks. Thank you, David. David mentioned the tremendous impact that Bob had on those that he taught and coached and worked with. One of those individuals that he coached was Mike Briggs. Mike's generosity, while the 
state and county funds met our needs. Mike's additional support through the MVCC Foundation allowed us to dream in technicolor when we thought of this, of this facility. It helped us, as I mentioned before, fill that margin of excellence. Mike Briggs, class of 1963, please welcome him to the podium. You know, it's tough being the seventh speaker. <laughs> Most of the good stuff's already been said. But I'll give it a shot. What a great day for the MVCC family, Coach Jorgensen, Utica, and all of Central New York. Now, I know Coach Broadhurst won't agree, but it seems like just yesterday we broke ground in June of 2010. And from my business career, believe me, I know all of the trials and tribulations that Gary and his team went through. The expectations of the school and the athlete and the community is that everything is going to go on as normal. And your job responsibilities are going to be the same. And that simply doesn't happen. But the accomplishments that Gary and his uh, team made through all these 16 months has been outstanding. Great job, Gary. And actually, even farther back, the first discussions uh, about naming a facility for Coach Jorgensen was in February of 2006. When I left uh, the MVCC campus in 1963, <clears throat> we had five teams. Uh, we were cramped at best in the old facility during those days. When I came back in the was reintroduced to MVCC and Coach Jorgensen in the early 2000s and was amazed to find out we had 22 teams, that we were a nationally recognized uh, athletic um, teams that performed better than anybody else in our uh, groupings across the country. We had such a fantastic record. I was amazed to see what has happened to MVCC in its entirety since 1963. And that really prompted a lot of discussion uh, amongst many folks uh, about the naming of a facility. Now, in our wildest dreams at that point, this was just a dream. And as it turns out, our, our patients and all of the people that worked very hard to make all of this happen. There were a lot of bumps in the road that we've heard, some of them very large boulders. Uh, but People working hard together achieve this magnificent facility that we see today. There's a few people to, I would like to personally thank. I know I won't hit them all. You, you never can because there's so, many, so much work that's done behind the scenes. But first of all, Fritz Barnes for his insight and suggestions. Former President Schaefer for his support and influence. And of course, Senator Griffo and Assemblywoman Cito, and of course our own Anthony Pacente, for their unwavering support. Frank DeRoss for his communication and organization. Dr. Van Wagener for his leadership and direction. And of course, Coach Broadhurst. His fingerprints are every place in this building as Coach Jorgensen's were in the original facility. All of these people working endlessly to achieve a common goal. To honor Coach Jorgensen for his 31 years of service to the school, the students, and the community, and help bring MVCC to another level of providing the best in, to the community in terms of education, athletic achievement, and fitness. Coach, we all hope you are proud of our way of saying thank you. New buildings are constructed on college campuses throughout this country every year. We're fortunate here at MVCC to have someone like Gary Broadhurst as our Director of Athletics, who's one of the hardest working professionals uh, around here at the college. He attended every meeting he was invited to, probably some that he may even wasn't in, invited to. 
because he was so committed to this facility and our athletics program. But at every chance he had, he reminded all of us involved that it was more than just a building and more than just an athletic program. This facility was also to honor Bob Jorgensen. So at this time, I'd like to bring to the podium Athletic Director at MVCC, Gary Broders. Thank you, President Van Wagner. As been said, today begins a new era at Mohawk Valley Community College, not only for intercollegiate athletics, but for our entire college community. This incredible facility we stand in today may never have materialized if a very special man didn't find his way here a little over 50 years ago. He laid the foundation on which one of the most extensive, diverse, and successful two-year college intercollegiate athletic programs has been built. I'd like to share with you just a few achievements that Hawk Athletics has accomplished to date. 19 National Junior College Athletic Association National Championships. <laughs> 116 times our young men and women have been individual national champions. That means they were the best at what they did compared to anybody in the entire country. Eighty-three regional championships, 108 conference championships, an astounding 423 times our student-athletes have been selected as NJCAA All-Americans. <laughs> and six have been chosen for the prestigious National Alliance of Two-Year College Athletic Administrators Scholar Athletes of the Year. While that number seems kind of small compared to those previous ones I just read, to put that in perspective, no other college in the country has had more than three during that period of time. That's the type of student athlete that is attracted to MVCC. Some of these special, special young men and women are here in uniform today, and undoubtedly numerous others are seated among you. As the late George Carlin once said, we, aren't measured, we don't ever measure our life in the number of breaths we take by the moments that take our breath away. So I'd like to recognize all present, past, and still to come student athletes for those moments that take our breath away. Thank you for being here. <laughs> While these are remarkable achievements on the field of competition, it's not the real story of what athletics has truly done for our young people. With that, I'd like to share with you a poem written by James Packer Henry in 1971. It's titled, The Cold Within. Six humans trapped by happenstance in black and bitter cold. Each one possessed a stick of wood, or so the story's told. Their dying fire in need of logs, the first woman held hers back, for on the faces around the fire, she noticed one of them was black. The next man looking across the way saw one not of his church and couldn't bring himself to give the fire his stick of birch. The third one sat in tattered clothes. He gave his coat a hitch. Why should his log be put to use to warm the idle rich? The rich man just sat back and thought of wealth he had in store and how to keep what he had earned from the lazy, shiftless poor. The black man's face bespoke revenge as the fire passed from his sight for all he saw in his stick of wood was a chance to spite the white. And the last man of this forlorn group did not accept for gain. Giving only to those who gave was how he played the game. The logs held tight in death still hands was proof of human sin. They didn't die from the cold without. They died from the cold within. Now, now how prophetic. Now how prophetic that poem is depicting of the many ills in our society. Throughout history, society has consistently turned to education to help combat the problems we've encountered. Why well, know of at least one place where the problems depicted in this poem are put aside. When a group of people come together, they don't care about the color of their skin, they don't care whether they're rich or poor, or whether they're just denomination, they may be. When that group comes together, 
They are bonded by a common cause that unites them. And for at least that brief period, all individual differences are put aside. And that group is called a team. So when we talk about what athletics does for a young person, this is what we do, this is who we are, this is how we make a difference. This, above all else, is where Bob Jorgensen has left a lasting impression in the thousands of young men and women who we created this opportunity for, and for that, we'll be eternally grateful. Coach, thanks for being who you are and for sharing your life with us. And now, I would like to ask everyone to please join as one as we recognize and pay tribute to the man who is the heart and soul of Hawk Athletics and epitomizes every possible definition of the word gentleman, as his name is honored for all time on this truly remarkable facility, the Robert R. Jorgensen Athletic Events Center. First of all, thank you all for coming and making this a big day for me. I'd like to thank all of these people here for their support, uh, state, county, etc., and all of these people for their work and their support. Mike Briggs, Mr. Mathis, and David, that was a great speech you made. Super. Uh, five and a half years ago, I was told that they would like to name a building for me. And I was struck in awe, very humbled. It's a very humbling experience. And I didn't, couldn't figure out what they really said for about another two weeks after or whatever. And I've been humbled ever since, really. And uh, after the five and a half years, like I say, I am still humbled, but I'm very proud and excited. And thank you, Mike Briggs, for bringing this building to us. And thank you all for making this one of the proudest days in my life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Bob. To conclude today's ceremony, I'd like to invite the platform party to the floor with me for the ribbon cutting. Hold your fire, everybody on the... Okay? Okay. Here on the 18th day of November, we dedicate the Robert R. Jorgensen Athletic and Event Center officially open. Cut.
thank you all for coming. Uh, we so appreciated your participation here in today's ceremony. We'll have tours available. Uh, the student athletes will be providing tours of the facility if you haven't had a chance to uh, walk through the entire center. Uh, and then if you're uh, willing to join us at 5 o'clock in the theater, uh, we'll have a uh, celebration uh, retrospective on the life and career of Bob Jorgensen. So you're welcome to join us there. We have uh, refreshments in the lobby uh, right now uh, prior to the tour, so please uh, join us for all of, all of those activities as well. Thank you so much for coming.